and welcome back to our kitchen. I'm Jennifer and this is Kate. And today we are taking on the Vatican in our Catholic cookbook challenge for July. So we've got the Swiss guards, the popes, Vatican City, and a whole lot of recipes. So let's get started. So if you're new here, our Catholic cookbook challenge works like this. Every month this year, we've challenged ourselves to try a new recipe from a different Catholic cookbook. And as you can tell, our cookbook for July is the Vatican cookbook, which as it turns out, has a whole lot more than just recipes in it. Yeah, we had no idea when we picked up this book how amazing it is. For starters, it's full of beautiful pictures. It could almost be a coffee table book. We're gonna show you a few. Nuns at the Vatican. Just really beautiful, vivid pictures. Here are some cardinals. I'm not sure what they're doing, but <laughs> there they are. Beautiful artwork also in the book. And my favorite picture is of a Swiss guard at the Vatican in the Sistine Chapel. So this book has a ton of information about the Vatican, but also especially about the Swiss guard itself. So if you're wondering, for example, how the Swiss Guard came to serve at the Vatican, then you have Pope Julian II to thank for that. In 1505, he was in a lot of trouble and he called and asked for the Swiss to help and protect. And today there are 110 Swiss Guards and they may serve as little as one tour of duty, which is 25 months, or they may be there for way longer, 25 years or more. And not only do they guard the Pope in Vatican City, but evidently they also cook because we didn't know it, but most of the recipes I would say in this book were submitted by the guards themselves. So who knew the Swiss guards can cook? And this book also has a lot of interesting stories and information about three different popes, Pope John Paul II, Pope Benedict XVI, and Pope Francis and it also has favorite recipes from their homelands. So there are so many delicious looking recipes in the book that it was really hard to narrow it down, but we did. Yes, we got it down to two, and we're going to be making minestrone soup from the Vatican Places section and apple kugan from the John Paul II section. So John Paul II is a favorite pope here, and evidently this is one of his favorite dishes. The picture looks so delicious, but we'll have to see if ours turns out anything like the picture in the book. So we're going to start first with the minestrone soup. And for that, you will need leeks, zucchini, salt and pepper, potatoes, tomatoes, carrots, celery, olive oil, cannoli beans, parsley, and bouillon. So we like the appeal of the soup using all the fresh summer vegetables but there's a lot of chopping up involved, so we need to get started on that. So we started off by just chopping up all the vegetables, pretty self-explanatory. We did the tomatoes, then the potatoes, then the celery, then the leeks and the carrots, and then finally the zucchini. And once that was done, we put it all in this bowl. Then we heated up some olive oil in our big soup pot and then added all of the vegetables into it and we let them saute for a little while after. Then we added in the water because obviously this is a soup. Then we put in the bouillon and the beans and then we stirred that together. We added some salt and some pepper and then just let that sit and simmer until we were ready for it. So while this is cooking, we are going to move on to making the apple kugan. For that, you need flour, regular sugar, and then powdered sugar, eggs, which will be separated into the egg yolks and the egg whites. You need apples, vanilla pudding mix, lemon juice, butter, sour cream, baking powder, cinnamon, cornstarch, it calls for potato starch, but you only need a very small amount, so we didn't go out and buy any, and then also plain breadcrumbs. We're just gonna do a friendly substitution. Also, the recipe called for golden delicious apples, but it's not really apple season here, so we're going with what we have, which I think are gala apples. But we always love apples here, we eat them almost every day, and we're really excited to try a new apple recipe. 
We started first with the dough, and for that you need flour, baking powder, and powdered sugar. Then whisk that all together, and add the butter, and cut it in with a pastry cutter or knives. Then add the sour cream, and the egg yolks, and mix it all together. I did have to use my hands at the end. And then I separated it out into two bowls, roughly two thirds and one third, and then covered it in plastic wrap because it does have to chill for four hours. Then we cut and skinned the apples for the filling. They had to be cut into really thin little slices. Then we added those into the pot right here and we added some water so we could simmer that for about 15 minutes. After we added in the sugar to the apples, the cinnamon, and the cornstarch, and the lemon juice, and then we stirred that back all up together, and of course, <laughs> we had help. Then we had a little dilemma over which pan everything would fit in, but we chose the rectangular one and then went ahead and buttered it. And then this was when we realized that the dough was very, very hard and would not spread after being in the fridge for so long. So yeah, that was a not so fun discovery. So we left it to defrost a little bit and strained out the apples, which had to simmer again after adding the cinnamon and such. And then we finally attempted to spread that dough out onto the bottom, which was way more work than it should have been, but thankfully we got there in the end. And here's helper number two. Then we had to bake that for a little while first. And then we attempted the endeavor of whipping egg whites. And I call it an endeavor because that's exactly what it was. An endeavor that seriously failed. They would not whip. We had to add the sugar in, in little bits, and also the vanilla pudding mix. But then after that, it really wouldn't even get thick. So that's what we ended up with a semi-thick liquid. Then it was time to assemble it. We put in the breadcrumbs on the bottom. Then we added the egg, supposed to be whipped, but it's really not mixture. And then we added in the apples. Then we pieced together the top because the dough was still too hard to really work with. And then we baked it for an hour and it came out like this and we added powdered sugar. And now it's time for the taste testing. The soup was pretty easy to make, we will say that. Yes. It was just chop and saute and put the broth in. So let's see how it tastes. It's pretty good. I wouldn't say it's the best soup I've ever had. It's um, it's nothing extraordinary. No, but it is good. It's like a good hearty vegetable soup. It's possible that in the hands of a different chef, this <laughs> recipe would have been a masterpiece. We're not Vatican chefs, yeah. so maybe it's only as good as Cons our skill. Considering the day we've had in the kitchen, <laughs> it's possible it was operator error. But it's not bad. It's been a long day. Kate's happy because the soup has no cabbage in it for a change. Or spinach. Yeah. Okay, so <laughs> let's talk about the apple kugan. Hmm. Okay, so here it is Ooh. out of the oven and we added powdered sugar. It does mm -hmm. smell delicious. It does. Was it fun to make? No. Yeah. yeah. No. Well, as you know from watching the video, we had some issues Jeez. as we went along. Yeah. We could uh, not get the egg whites to stiffen, stiffen up. Maybe we added the sugar too soon, possibly. Yeah. And the dough was another issue. Mm -hmm. The dough being so hard after it was chilled. Mm -hmm. 
the pan, which pan? Yes, it, they weren't very clear on what type of pan to use. And so we ended up here. <laughs> lastly, it was supposed to cook for an hour, but after you know 30 minutes, it was looking pretty done. I let it go for another 10 minutes. I think if it had gone for an hour, it might have been fried up. So maybe Vatican ovens run yeah. cooler, I don't know. But we're going to taste it because it does smell delicious. Okay, so it, it looks done on the inside. We cut into it and we'll see how it tastes. It's definitely very good. Yes. The apples are nice and tender. The crust is flaky. It smells wonderful in here. So maybe we could forgive the recipe for maybe. giving us such grief. I hope there are no Vatican chefs out there watching this video and having heart attacks. Okay, so would we recommend the Vatican cookbook? And the answer is maybe. Yeah, <laughs> it's... Hmm. Yeah, <laughs> it's not the best book if you're in a hurry or, or if you're a beginning chef. Beginning chef. And there are definitely a lot of recipes that call for more exotic ingredients like eel or rabbit or different wine or liqueurs. Capers. I yeah. don't have those. You know, I don't, you don't have, have those dating around. Right? So definitely for the more uh, serious hardcore chef. I think if you are just in it for the recipes. Now, if you're in it just to learn more about the Vatican and the Swiss Guard, absolutely. Yes, this definitely. is a wonderful book. So many stories, so many cool pictures, so much information. Maybe it would work better as a coffee table book. Maybe, unless you're a sous chef somewhere, yeah, you might really love this, but yeah, so, we've been here all afternoon. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's definitely, it was fun to try, but I think of all the cookbooks that we have tried this year so far, probably, the recipes of this one were they were good they weren't great and they were a little bit labor intensive for us so it's not top in the charts it's not yeah sure. that's not but it was fun to try something new and gosh you know all the pictures of the vatican <laughs> so beautiful so there you have it that is our july cooking challenge which might have been a big fail <laughs> but no everything turned out it's good it's edible yep it will get eaten it will you get eaten. it will so thanks for joining us today in the kitchen and we will see you next time. Bye. Bye.